Okay, good afternoon, everyone. I hope everyone can hear me very well. As I've been introduced, I am uh, Alfred Siepe, and I understand uh, my colleagues which presented before me make you understand what are medicinal plants and what are vegetables and their value. So as for me, I'll be presenting about the quality control of those medicinal plants, vegetables, and their product. But uh, I would like to start with uh, medicinal plants. There are lots of medicinal plants available in South Africa and all over the world. In these slides, I have only shown a few examples of medicinal plants and you are familiar with it because you might have seen them in the, uh, uh, in the previous presentation. They are not the only one, there's still lots of these. These natural resources have got lots of health benefit in other ways we can benefit a lot from it. There are lots of products which can be developed from medicinal plants. For example, they can be used uh, to, make, um, to make capsules. I'm sorry. They can be used to make capsules. Some they can be used and consumed as uh, uh, soft drinks. They can also process into oil and others can be used in pharmaceutical and cosmetic industry. Like as some of my colleagues have mentioned, there are lots of product, medicinal plant products available on the market. Uh, those products, some of them, they've got uh, uh, labels and some they with a very nice label. But the question is, whatever is reflected on those particular labels, is it actually what is in the product? and any health benefit associated with it. Because in some cases, you find that a raw plant like this one, or a different plant is used in a product, and uh, only to find that whatever health benefit you will be gaining from it, it could be a different one. By the way, I'm not referring to the, med uh, uh, to the medicinal plant product which are developed at here at ARC. You must keep in mind that uh, beside ARC, there are a lot of uh, uh, competitors around which produce this uh, medicinal plant products. As a matter of fact, beside the, the, the challenge of uh, having a uh, uh, different uh, plant in, uh, in a product, there are some uh, products which don't even have labels. Regardless of that, it is still our responsibility to know the contents of those products. Of course, sometimes it happened by intention and sometimes by mistakes. Anyway, I'm saying by mistake because I don't want to offend others would like uh, go further to uh, even do adulteration of the product so they can benefit uh, too much product from it. But at the end of the day, by so doing, it does not um, uh, 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 give relevant health benefits to the consumers. Okay, whether uh, mislabeling of the product, it is done by mistakes or not, actually is not even allowed or accepted at all because it has got a direct impact on the consumers. In this case, the product, each, in fact, the product has to, uh, a customer must be able to gain relevant health benefits from the, pro, uh, from the plant or that product in terms of its efficacy. So if a wrong plant is used, Truly speaking, the consumer won't be able to get those relevant health benefits. And the other thing is, mislabeling of the product, it also has an effect on things like the side effects, uh, tox uh, uh, toxicity, and sometimes even, the, of course, the active uh, uh, compounds in that wrongly labeled product won't be relevant ones. Okay. Uh, as much as we are concerned with the quality control of medicinal plants, as you, uh, you, 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 you were introduced uh, by our chairperson that we also deal with vegetables, uh, we are also concerned with the quality of these vegetables, whether they're still raw or as processed product. Remember, vegetables, they also provide us with essential nutrients which also have health promoting properties. Either as uh, the, the, sorry, the, the, uh, sorry. 
either as the commercial vegetables or the indigenous vegetable, which some of my colleagues have talked about it, we still have relevant uh, essential uh, uh, nutrients from these uh, 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 vegetables. We can gain uh, vitamins from this. We can also have uh, mineral elements and carbohydrates. The quality control of these vegetables and together with their product are also affected by cultivation processes. These include uh, the, 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 the spacing, the fertilizer, and the uh, irrigation, and some agronomical practices which are taking place as far as the cultivation in, is concerned. The other factors is, uh, which affect the quality of this product is uh, the dry methods, how the products are dried or the raw materials are dried. Is it on the sun or is it in the oven or maybe uh, is it in the uh, in the cold room or any other things which is used uh, to dry it? The other uh, thing which affect their quality is the processing. How are they processed? At what temperature and for how long? The storage conditions, it also has got an effect on the quality of these vegetables. By the way, this is, this, uh, cult, uh, uh, this uh, practices also have got an effect on the quality of the medicinal plants, which I've uh, already mentioned earlier. As I'm still on the, uh, uh, on the food products, uh, I want to show you this uh, in, uh, nutritional information sheet. I hope uh, most of us, we are familiar with this sheet. And if uh, you, have, you might have missed it by mistake, it's usually found on food product. This sheet describes exactly or more or less what is on the product, I mean in the product. In fact, if you find that uh, uh, there's... Uh, for example, if I have to use this as an example, there's a, a certain amount of, uh, uh, let's say, fat content at a particular amount. In this product, when we analyze it, we must be able to find it. In this, uh, uh, the nutritional information sheet is, uh, in fact, is, uh, is uh, compulsory. In other words, it is regulated. So whatever is on the product, it must show on this sheet and vice versa. But sometimes things get derailed. There are those uh, people who develop product, they manipulate the system for what I don't know, but it's still our responsibility in the analytical laboratory to make sure that whatever is displayed on the product is uh, really relevant, because otherwise it will have an, a direct impact on the consumers like I have explained. So uh, how do we really do this? Uh, 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 how do we check this uh, nutritional information? In the analytical laboratory, after we receive the sample, we usually dry it. Of course, there are those other samples which we just analyze without drying. We analyze them uh, while well, they are still fresh. In a situation where they are dried, after the drying process, we go into the grinding. Sometimes using this uh, old uh, meta crystal, and uh, we can also use uh, the, the, the advanced milling machine. The idea with this grinding is just to expose, uh, to expose the nutrients and the active compounds which we'll be looking for. The grinding process, it is followed by extraction. With this extraction process, we use different solvent, but I just want to help you to understand this extraction process, uh, process very well. Uh, it is more or less similar to a situation whereby uh, when you are making a tea, uh, usually with hot water, in fact, what you are doing, you are extracting phytochemical compounds. And in the laboratory, we do exactly the same, the same thing, but the only difference is we use organic solvents to extract uh, phytochemicals, vitamins, and all those nutrients and the active compounds, either in medicinal plants or in vegetables. Extracting uh, our compounds, we analyze the sample using this uh, state-of-the-art equipment like ICP, GC, and HPLC. If it's the case with the uh, food product, we usually look at things like vitamin, mineral elements, 
and fed contents. But if it is a, a, a product developed from a, a medicinal plant, we evaluate uh, uh, things like uh, antioxidant activities, and we also check uh, antimicrobial activities. I can give you an example while we are still here. For example, in case where the product is claimed that is used to uh, fight against a particular pathogen, we will take that pathogen, do whatever we do with the uh, with the, with the product, and combine and uh, and evaluate specifically with that pathogen and check. Or it, if it will uh, inhibit that pathogen or not. The other thing which we also check is the toxicity. So we can check the product if it's safe for human consumption. And we also check um, stability, how long this product can be on the shelf uh, so that it can still provide relevant health benefit as is claimed. The other thing which I also want to highlight in a situation whereby we suspect that uh, a ROM plant might be used when developing a product. We check the, the, the fingerprint for that uh, plant. You should know that each and every plant has got the unique chemical compounds. So by so doing, we check the fingerprint of that product in relation to the actual, pro, uh, the actual plant which is supposed to be in the product and compare. But if we find that they are not comparable, obviously there's something wrong with that uh, product. At the end of the day, or in summary, the result we got from the analytical laboratory, we use it to help or advise the cultivation team as far as what are the best cultivation uh, or agronomical practices which will end up giving the maximum or optimum or the best uh, the best, uh, uh, the best, uh, the best products. In this case, those information can be used to look at uh, what uh, 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 what are the irrigation uh, regime or the uh, the fertilization regime, which can be applied. So it does not affect uh, the active compounds in those particular uh, medicinal plants and vegetable. The other information is sent to a, a product and development team, and it will help as to the uh, uh, with regard to the stability of the uh, of the product and also their efficacy if it's not uh, 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 if it's not affected during the processing processing pro, uh, uh, pro, uh, during processing steps and with this i think this is the end of the presentation and i would like to thank everyone for listening and uh, also the opportunity which have been given just to give you an, an idea of uh, what is actually taking place in the laboratory.